Welcome to Full to Crease and Crumple, everybody. I'm Tina. And I'm Anna. And today is a very exciting day for me. I have been working really hard on learning the app Procreate, where a lot of people I know know this app very well. But I am learning. Anna and I decided that I'm going to try and do a tutorial on our channel to see how this pans out and if people like it. And if you like it, make sure you hit like because then we know and also give us a comment if there's any kind of tips that you can give me on doing something better or quicker or easier. Or something else you uh, want her to try and draw. Yeah. Or I can attempt to draw other things like, you know, just anything. So enough about that. I, I can't wait to show you what I've done and I hope you guys all like it. Here we go. So I'm just showing them Parker right up. And this is what it looks like. And this is what I'm using screen size. There are different sizes of the of the paper size, as they, I like to call it, that you can use. It depends what you're posting. If you're posting it, if you're sending it as email, you know, it's always a different size. This is the color wheel, my favorite thing in the world. So I'm just kind of showing like what you can do with the color wheel. You could turn it around, blah, blah, blah. And there's all the brushes that it comes with. So I'm using the calligraphy monoline brush and that is layers. So one thing about Procreate I learned is you use lots of layers, layers upon layers. So this here is I'm drawing a line. And what's really cool is you draw the line across and you leave it there and then you put your finger on top. And it straightens the line. Not only does it straighten the line when you hold the pen down, but when once you put your finger in, it actually makes it like straight, as in you're not off centered or anything like that. It straightens the line for you. And then this here, I'm using the Gaussian blur because at five percent, just to kind of blur out the uh, the water top part a little bit. And so here comes the layer. So does so it, I'm on my second do you, layer. does that mean you're getting rid of the crisp line? Yeah. Okay. It just like blurs out that line a bit. And so this here I'm showing, I'm on layer two and I'm moving it down one layer and I'm using the monoline brush and I use this dark, dark, dark green. It almost looks black on camera. So by doing that, that line that I created underneath the water, it doesn't go through by moving layer two to layer, like underneath layer one. Cause you see now I'm creating another layer mm -hmm. on top of it and watch how I dry it and I didn't move it. Watch what it does. It goes on top of the water. Hmm. So the difference is when you move one layer in between the, I guess the background and the water, you won't see it. So now you can fix it. So now I notice like I, I like it more straight at the bottom. So I just, I just draw it and to kind of fill it in just to kind of show everybody what I'm doing. And then, and what I notice also, and with other like tutorials I've seen is that the color is a lot different on camera than it is when you're actually physically like drawing on the app. I think it's really cool that you were able to expand the portion you're working on so that you can see yeah. or add more detail. It helps a lot. It definitely does. So this I like they had that little bump. So what's really cool with the eraser portion is also like if you hold down the eraser, it basically turns that eraser brush to what brush you're using. So it'll turn into a monoline. If you turn it into like, you know, another brush, it'll turn into that brush. So right now I'm creating my palette. I think everyone should do this. It just is so much easier to get your work done this way. And instead of going back and changing the wheel every time you just create the palette. So you know exactly what you're going to use it for next. Sounds like a good tip. Mm hmm. And then here I didn't put what percentage I use because it changes and it depends on what you want. 
So I'm constantly, you'll see that I'm constantly changing the opacity of it. So the bottom, the bottom wheel or not wheel, but the bottom tier is the opacity of the, I guess the drawing that you're going to do, the sketch you're doing. And then the top part is the brush, the thickness of it. So you can see like, I'm like, uh, I want it to be a little bit more opaque because it's too light so it's like constantly yeah so the only thing I can I could tell you is that opacity wise I usually keep it between like between 70% to 100% and then also it depends what you're drawing right it could even go down to 50 for the size of the brush I usually go between a range of like 2% to even like 15% and again, it depends what you're drawing. So in this case, for this specific drawing, I didn't go higher than 15%. And I fluctuated up and down. And then... Sorry, Tina, did you say 15 is in 1-5? Yep. Okay. And then um, for the opacity, I you can see there is 100. So I went from between 70 to 100 for this drawing. And here, um, you can see I'm changing the colors within. So there's actually a brush that I used here called Oceans. And it's in the Elements brush section. And that creates the ocean lines. So it's easier. So this Pine Tree Broad is an actual brush that I got for free. Do tell. And it's... <laughs> It's actually on Art with Flow, where I, I've like done a lot of her tutorials. You should check out her channel. It's actually really good. If you're learning Procreate, I think she's a really good person to learn from. She actually gives you a lot of information to help you with your drawing. And this is like, I learned from her to be able to create my own drawings. But she does have free brushes if you sign up with her. So this is like one of her brushes that I've used. So I have a question. When you were um, tapping the trees, they were coming up in different sizes automatically. Does Procreate balance out where you're tapping? No, it's your pencil. Okay. So I'm using the Apple Pencil, the second generation. Okay. So that's that. And you... It depends on the pressure you ah, put in when you're drawing. Okay, that makes sense. So if I'm tapping a little harder, the tree would be a little bit bigger. If I'm kind of lightly tapping, then it's a little smaller. And you can adjust the pressure on your um, on your pen too, on your Apple Pencil. You could do that on the Procreate app. So if you find yourself a little heavy-handed, then you can lighten the pressure certain areas to make it where it fits your needs and whatever you do. So here I use a cloud brush and to create those bumps and stuff from what clouds make and trying to just, you know, well, I guess ombre. What you could also do here to blur it, you could have used the Gaussian blur and do like another 5% mm. depending like what you like mm -hmm. and just blur it so it blends all together. And what I normally would do, but I wanted to showcase more of like exactly the techniques that I use. And then the stars were made for a glimmer brush. And that one, again, is the thicker the brush, the, the brighter the stars. So now I'm flipping it to create the shadow. So this is where I made a mistake. So one thing I want to tell everybody, so they learn from me is that when you're doing layers, so I do one layer for the left side, one layer for the right side, right? For the pine trees, stick with that. If you want to add more pine trees, then you click on the layer of that pine tree, like that section. So what I did was I was doing the pine tree on the left side and I wanted to create more pine trees on the right side. And I just, instead of switching layers, I kept doing it from the left layer when I should have went to the right layer and created more. So was it so when I'm almost like you were flipping it, and pasting it? Well, because if you could see when I flip mm -hmm. it, 
it shows everything of the left layer because okay. I specifically picked that layer to flip. But luckily enough, I could pick that layer to also erase everything to you. That's really cool, Tina. Yeah, I I was just like, oh no, like how am I doing a tutorial on this? But I thought this is a good learning process. Absolutely. And I get, you know, and it helps other people out to like remember because see here, it's like right there I even have a dot and I don't know if I actually remove the dot after, but you do the same. I think because sometimes it's sensitive, the iPad. Okay. So then if you accidentally kind of like heavy handedly, might, like your pinky might graze across and it might draw something like just draw a line. You don't realize it until like further down in the drawing. And what's also good about layers is you can figure out which layer you want to and then you can just erase it. Okay. You know, so you have to be very aware of your layers when you're doing this is what you're saying, basically. Yeah. Yeah, but doing layers upon layers is the smartest thing because if you mess up on one thing and you didn't create layers, you have to erase your whole thing, like your whole drawing. Whereas if I messed up on the pine trees alone, I can go to that pine tree layer and just delete that layer and everything else will still be there. I just have to recreate, add another layer and recreate that pine tree again. Whereas if you just do everything in one layer, if you mess up something huge, you're going to have to erase the whole thing. And that's a lot of work. Your reflection looks great, Tina. Thank you. Yeah, it's my first tutorial. I hope it wasn't too fast. If it is too fast, let me know. And I'll try to slow it down for next time. But yeah, this is kind of like, I, I enjoy drawing stuff like this, like reflections and sky and this is a picture of it. Oh, I did remove the dots after. But yeah, that's the final picture of it completed. It looks really good, Tina. Way to go. Good job. Thank you. Keep it up. <laughs> I can't wait to see your <laughs> next uh, appropriate creation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was. it's nerve-wracking, though, because I don't know how people do it, but you definitely have to pre-plan. I definitely took some time to plan out what I wanted to draw, how I was going to draw it. Layer wise, that was going to, you know, you just put layer upon layer. And that is like the best tip I can give anybody is just remember to do layers because it's just an easier way to help you when you make mistakes. And also if you need to go back and do something and recreate it, or maybe if you're like, Oh, the sun is too big and you want to shrink it. It's, easier to do that because of the selections because mm -hmm. you can they have like all these buttons and commands and if anybody wants me to go through all the commands like let me know as well I mean I'm here to help because I'm learning myself but I've learned Tina, a lot I want you to <laughs> I want to learn from you <laughs> so yes I think we should we should definitely do um, a video about commands in procreate yeah I just yeah it's really cool I really really like procreate and I feel like it's a really good app and an easy app to use too. So if you're a new person that, you know, want to get into drawing, and you've never drawn before, Procreate's the best. There you have it. So yeah. Tina loves Procreate. I do. I do. <laughs> I recommend it for everybody. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe and turn on all your post notifications. Thanks for watching. Peace. Sweet.